I'm Gary West uh, and I do a podcast called Enjoy Your Pipe. And uh, we've just had a, a live episode of the yeah. podcast, uh, number episode number 18, I think. I think so. Recently started. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how have the first 18 episodes been going? What, how, how did you start putting it together? So uh, I did a programme on the BBC for about 20 years, 21 years in fact, called Pipeline. And uh, that, that finished this year. And so the day after it finished, which was back in April, I jumped right back on the horse. And I thought, right, I, I enjoy doing this, so I'm going to keep doing it. And I had no idea how to do that. I knew about podcasts, but I wasn't really into them. And I'd probably listened to two in my life. So I did a bit of research. Um, how do you make a podcast, basically? And it seemed fairly straightforward because all the technical stuff of capturing and making a radio program I'd been doing, I'd actually been producing Pipeline for the last couple of years as well as presenting. So I was doing everything, you know, all the, all the editing and so yeah. on. So I knew how to do that bit. I just didn't know how to kind of make it appear wherever podcasts appear. And it turned out to be quite easy. You just upload it and, and there it is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I, it's quite nice being my own boss. I can say what I like, when I like, yeah. and uh, talk to whoever I want to talk to. And uh, I'm not kind of rigidly going to a timetable of 54 minutes, 50 seconds or anything like that. It yeah. can be as long as short yeah. as I want. So I'm loving it, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I think it was much to the relief of um, quite a lot of people that you decided to get straight back on the horse, as you say. Um, and uh, what, what's the support been like? It's been wonderful, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of great podcasts and other kinds of piping-related media out there, of course. And they were wonderful. You know, I, I phoned a couple of them up, or a couple of people, like Rab, uh, for example, got in touch and, and said, welcome to the, the podcasting world, anything I need, to give you know any advice yeah. or whatever. And they've been, you know, it's, you might think, oh, there's, there's a bit of competition between the different people who are doing piping online. And it's not like that at all, actually. There's room for everyone. So the support from those kinds of people has been excellent. And then the listeners, superb. You know, I had no idea what to expect in terms of numbers. Um, and uh, I think we've just, just passed 25,000 downloads, which is great. Um, and I think already I'm beginning to get a kind of community of people, a couple of thousand people who seem to listen to everyone, you yeah. know, and then you get others who seem to dip in and out, which is fine. Um, and they get in touch, you know, and, and uh, so I spend a lot of my time reading out their emails. And, and um, it's just so nice to actually hear somebody's journey, you know, yeah. someone gets in touch from wherever in the world and say, well, I've been piping for a year or I've been piping for 50 years and just giving little snippets of their journey yeah. uh, in piping or as fans of piping or as players. So I just like to try and share that. So the support has been fantastic. Yeah. 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 And uh, you had a good crowd in, in here just now for, yeah. the, for the live pod. We had you yeah. today. We've got yeah. Big Rab in tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who, who did you have on? And uh, I, I hear you had a you, you you pulled in a couple of last minute last minute friends. Well, it was just me being very disorganised. Yeah, it was like yeah, I'll, I'll do a podcast live. Yeah, no problem. And then it was suddenly, oh, I need some guests actually. So I'd I'd arranged a couple up front, and then um, yeah, I, I was well, I wasn't exactly tr- trolling the bars of Glasgow <laughs> to find musicians, but I did. There were a few of them knocking about but there, there were a few people last night I had a tune with and a chat with, and I said, fancy coming up and having a tune on the podcast. And um, most of them I knew before. Yeah. Um, but it's the first time I've done a live broad- or podcast. I've done live broadcasts often enough when other people are doing, are organizing everything. Yeah. But um, I suddenly thought, right, uh, how do I record this? Because there's obviously microphones on the stage because it's going out in the room as it were or in the tent but how do I capture what I'm saying so I brought my son yeah yeah here's a tip for people if if you need to know how to do something technical bring a child with you <laughs> although he's 24 now so he's but um so he there was a bit of panic there when we thought hmm, the way we were planning to do it might not work uh, anyway as far as I know and I had a quick check it's all there yes. and uh on tape. Uh, it's on tape. It's on tape, as it were, and uh, I now need to go and listen to it and then upload it, ideally. Yeah. So, so yeah, we had um, various guests. We had Andy May, who's a Northumbrian piper who I've known for years, played with on and off. Uh, he was one of my last night. Andy, fancy a tune in the podcast. And um, in B, who I'm now about to go and introduce upstairs, I'm comparing their concert tonight. 
Um, and actually they're featuring in a full session very soon on the podcast because I recorded them in my wee boffy Monday morning. So oh, that's my first uh, sort of attempt at actually recording a session in the boffy. And it went really well. And, um, uh, do do, do so people know that's coming up or have we just got, a, just got an announcement? I think you might just have got a scoop there, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that will probably put that out next week. So it's a, a, a session and a chat, and um, so there. Um, well, if people tune into the podcast, they'll know exactly what they are. But they're basically a coming together of Ulin pipes and Scottish small pipes, uh, and they're called in B because they play in the key of B. <laughs> big part of the piping scene coming up actually yeah. because they're all great musicians four of them uh, and the, the sounds just melt together beautifully I think yeah know? and uh, you had a couple of tunes from uh, uh, Finlay and John as well Finlay and John so they were uh, this afternoon launching the new National Piping Centre 25 year celebration tune collection which is a beautiful I wish I had one here uh, it was a beautiful volume very nicely produced yeah. of tunes from uh, former pupils of students and teaching staff, people connected with the centre, uh, and it's yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to getting yeah. in about and, that. And, as well. and that was that was Finley Finley McDonald and John John Mulhern, of course. Finley McDonald, John Mulhern, two of the key people, obviously, of the festival and the centre, uh, and key people behind the the editing of the book yeah. as well. Um, uh, and then I had yes, uh, so, some very exotic sounds from Estonia.
Caitlin, uh, Maggie, uh, and her husband are just wonderful musicians. I know they've been here before, but I'd never met them before. Uh, so the Estonian bagpipe and a bit of uh, kind of quite cool sax that goes with it, yeah. and a bit of singing. And um, yeah, I mean, I try in the podcast to be as international as possible, not just Scottish pipes by any means. Um, so I've, I've kind of gone, done a wee trail around Europe on the podcast and it's nice to get some live Estonian music there, so yeah, yeah that, that was great. And you know, ev- everybody loves piping live, everybody loves World yeah. Week. Yeah. What, what, what do you love about this week, about the whole festival? What do you look forward to? I think, I think the thing is meeting people, you know, and I remember Finlay saying this to me, Finlay MacDonald, um, a while back. He said, you know, it's great to hear the music. Of course, it's all about the music, but for him, it's actually about the, all the stuff that goes around the music as well. Meeting people, chatting to people, having a drink with people, yeah. going for some food with people. Um, and I suspect a lot of ideas get brokered yeah, <laughs> in these yeah, situations. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, maybe the following year you find something appearing here that actually started over a yeah. coffee the year yeah, before or yeah. a couple of years before. Um, and, you know, you, you, when you've been around as long as I have, both in the pipe bands, since I played pipe bands for years, um, so you know you only have to go five yards here yeah. and you meet somebody that you yeah. know yeah. and it's very sociable uh, and uh, so yeah I love the music but I love the crack too yeah it's great isn't it and where can we get the podcast so you can get the podcast on basically all podcast available sites um, so it's hosted on Buzzsprout um, so you can go there uh, but it's you know Apple uh, all, all of the main ones um, Spotify all, if it's called Enjoy Your Piping with Gary West put that into the search engine there we have there we have Enjoy Your Piping the t-shirt this is the prototype but it seems it seems to be working and uh, yeah and uh, so I'll get some more merch made soon yeah. so. <laughs> Gary enjoy your piping yeah. thanks very much <laughs> nicely done Thank you. some of you might have been already up in the upstairs there for the launch of the new National Piping Centre Collection, 25 years celebration of music. And uh, John's going to play a few tunes. So please welcome, first up, John Mulhern. And uh, you've also had a bit of a role to play in the Piping Live Festival um, that's been going on all this week. Um, how long has that been in the planning? Uh, well, I mean, the festival, kind of planning starts in earnest just shortly after the festival happens, really. So it's a sort of year-round process, but I guess it, it kind of really kicks into gear maybe about four months and five months in advance. You know. And this is Piping Live's 20th year. Um, a lot of people are saying they remember the first one and it's just been going from strength to strength yeah. every year, year on year. Um, what's, uh, what, what's, what's so special about it this year in its 20th year? I think, you know, to be honest, I think the special thing is that it's the first like, really proper festival back since Covid actually. Do you know? We had a full programme last year but I think that um, audience numbers were maybe not quite what they had been prior to the pandemic. Yeah. I think there was still a reluctance on the part of a lot of people to kind of come out to big events. Yeah. So I think it, you know it just feels like a real bumper year, and it yeah. just like, sort of coincides with our yeah. 20th anniversary, we've, which is really yeah. nice. We've certainly seen that in the crowds this week here. From from early on in the week, yeah. quite often we were saying it, you know, it builds up into the last couple of days, Thursday and Friday before the world. But it's been very busy on. From first thing on Monday, and I think you were saying, you know, most of the events are either sold out or nearly sold yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, ticket sales have just been very, very good from the get-go. So, you know, very happy with all of that. And of, the, of course, there's the the fantastic events in the street cafe are, are free, um, and there are some 
uh, events upstairs in the auditorium as well. I think we've got Ross Ainsley on there at the moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had, of course, the, uh, the tune book launch yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to just tell us a bit about some of the events that have been going on up there this week? Yeah, and I mean, then, and then the June book as well. Yeah, I mean, as you say, you know, the street cafes, the street cafe is like the hub, really, I suppose, isn't it? You know, it's all free, everything that's going on in there. So people are just kind of hanging out and catching whatever's on the stage. Upstairs in the auditorium, we've kind of got a mixture of free and ticketed events. That I think the lunchtime recital series has been a particularly nice one this year. That there's a sort of theme. Um, that sort of ties them all together is about the instruments that the players are, have been performing on. Um, you know, I think we, we tend to think about the players themselves, obviously, but that, the instruments that they play are, are a really important part of the whole package of, of who the, their identity. So, you know, Angus McCall played John McCall's bagpipe, who's you know an ancestor of John McCall. Um, Willie McCallum played Hugh McCallum's bagpipe yesterday, which was just beautiful. And, and yeah, like as you say, Ross Ainsley's actually up there right now playing Gordon Duncan's yeah. instrument. So that's a great thing. And then yeah, just like a bunch of other kind of free events in amongst all that up there. And you've been playing a bit this week as well. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. We had, um, we had our book launch yesterday, which is quite a big deal for, for, for us, for me, I guess. It's the 25th anniversary of the Piping Centre, so um, yeah, we put together this huge big collection and had the launch yesterday. I played a few tunes and didn't make a complete fool of myself. And there's a few of your <laughs> tunes in the book? Yeah, there are indeed. I, yeah, I've got a few tunes in there as well. Yeah. And uh, in terms of uh, your you're competing elsewhere this year. You're having a fairly decent year, I think it's safe yeah, to say. Yeah, do you know, I, I kind of came back to doing some competitions again last year. I did a bit of a break from it for about five or six years. And I think it, it was just a bit of a, an itch that I needed to scratch, yeah. really. So, yeah, I've had a, a kind of reasonable season. And we've we'll got the big competitions at Open and Inverness yeah. over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and uh, just uh, one, one final thing, you know, what does it what does it mean to you to be in your role at the piping centre and um, you know have such a central role to play in what a lot of people see as what you know the biggest week in the the piping year? Yeah, I mean it, it's a privilege. Do you know what, what else could I say about it? It's yeah. a privilege and an honour to to be right at the centre of it. I feel enormously lucky. So. Fantastic. Thanks a lot for talking to us. Enjoy Good. the rest of the week. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Cheers. It's been a strange few years for us all, hasn't it? But uh, it's great to be back, you know, been playing a lot, making some pipes, so what can you do? <laughs> and uh, many of us here are playing Northumbrian, oh, sorry, well, I'm playing Scottish well. small pipes, he's <laughs> playing Northumbrian pipes, <laughs> but they're very closely connected, are they? They are, yeah, um, dimensionally very similar, I think you could pretty much take the reeds out of one and stick them in the other, so aye. close cousins you could call it. And I suppose. We, we had to revive our bellows pipe tradition in Scotland because it disappeared. Has yours been continuous? Well, not to brag, but yeah. Yeah, ours, <laughs> has, uh, ours has kept going for a good few hundred years, really. So, uh, yeah, I feel I'm on thin ice here. But <laughs> yeah, you better just wish and uh, play some tunes. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Andy, me.